All right, what's going on, everybody? Um, today, I'm going to be introducing you guys to Monroe. He is our Western hog nose. Hold on one second. I don't know if that helped or made it worse. Uh, anyhow, he's our Western hog nose. Uh, we've had him for, I don't know, a couple months now, maybe. He's still a, a young one. He's not, not near full grown yet. Um, but we are excited about him. He is amazing. He's a Western hog nose, like I said. He's he's a fantastic pet. He's a great beginner snake. I didn't know that at first. I was kind of iffy about him, um, but done enough rambling. This is our Western hog nose, Monroe. He's still little, like I said. He doesn't really coil around like. The other snakes do. He just kind of hangs out. He's just chill. Look how he does his tail, though. I don't know if you can see it. Look at that. Pretty cool. He's got a little black tongue. Um. Yeah, it's not really focusing too good. He is a he is a Western hog nose. Um. This is a a wild type, more for a normal, whatever. Uh, he does have some head genes, but I'm not 100%. I don't remember what they were. Uh, but I do know he's hit for a couple different genes. Um, they're a very cool little snake. They have a whole lot of different um, defense mechanisms, I guess you could say. Uh, one is, he's just looking at me. <laughs> he's just trying to figure out what I'm talking about. He's very curious. He's a very curious guy. Um, he has, like I said, they do have a few um, different defense mechanisms. Um, one of them being that they flatten their head out. Uh, they call them hooding, like a cobra would do, but they're not quite, they don't really do quite as dramatic as a cobra. Um, but that's one thing that they do to uh, defend themselves. And they, uh, they also hiss sometimes when they get nervous. And they, um, they can feign death, like they can play dead. Sometimes they do that. Um, these rats are driving me crazy. I'm sure you guys can hear them. They make a lot of noise. <laughs> um, sometimes they, they play dead to kind of distract their prey. They'll roll over and stick their tongue out, act like they're dead. Uh, they bluff strike. Which, uh, when he's scared, if, if you go to grab him too fast, he doesn't. I've never seen him do it, but the little one that we have, she'll do it. She'll strike at you. But uh, it's just, uh, they strike with their mouth closed, so it's just like a little peck. <laughs> uh, they can also musk on you, which uh, is a very strong odor. Um, and that's pretty much, that's about it. He's, a, he's just a cool little guy. Look at them. Look at him stripes by his head. I don't know if you can make out his nose turning up like it does. Um, but this is Monroe. This is our Western male. He's a male Western hog nose. He, uh, I think he's, he's about four or five, maybe six months old. Um, they don't get very big. They stay uh, fairly small. Um, they don't get very big around. I want to say most of your your grown your larger females will get to be about the size maybe of a quarter as far as a round size of a quarter maybe a little bit bigger but uh, they get I want to say they get up to three and a half feet when they're full grown three feet when they're full grown the females get larger of course uh, and one cool thing about these guys is that if you want a snake that you're gonna be able to see during the daytime um, if you're home that day, your daytime, and you want a snake that you're going to be able to see a lot, uh, this is your breed of snake. Uh, these are, they are called, I believe it's diurnal. I, I hope I'm saying that right. Uh, so, which means they're basically out during the daytime and then they sleep at night, kind of like we do, unless you're on a different shift, work shift. Uh, but they, uh, they're very cool. They're very friendly 
uh, surprisingly, they're very friendly. I didn't know, like I said at first, um, they are technically venomous. Uh, they are rear fang venomous is what it's called. So their fangs are in the very back of their mouth. Um, it's a very mild venom. Some people, if they are to bite you in to actually inject the venom into you, um, most people it just gets itchy, irritated, like a mosquito bite. Uh, some other people it can make you, you know, make them sick, make them need to lay down or, you know, uh, no, you don't really need medical attention unless you're just extremely allergic to their, their venom. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, but for the most part, they are venomous. Um, they're rear fang venom. It's a mild, mild, very mild venom. Um, the, the reason they have their fangs in the back of their mouth is because in the wild, uh, they would eat um, things like frogs. And the frog, when it's in danger, you know, to swell, it'll blow up. And then fangs in the back to pop it. And, uh, or at least that's what I've grown to understand about these guys and why they have these rear fangs. Um, but they are a very awesome animal. They're very chill. They're very calm. Uh, from the one, the ones that we have, you know, I'm sure. So like anything else, you can get one or two that may not be the same, uh, but for the most part, they're a very chill, very calm animal. Um, these guys are eating. He's eating um, fuzzy, uh, mouse fuzzy. Um, the other one is eating a mouse pinky. She's still a little bitty thing. Um, she's. You'll be able to see a big difference when I show her. I'm not sure when I'm going to do that. She's still not fond of being handled. Uh, she still tries to run away. Um, and she has did the bluff strike at me a couple of times. And that was pretty funny. Um, but anyhow. Uh, so, yeah, that is a thing. Uh, they do bluff strike is what they call. So they don't, I don't think it's common from the bite. Uh, but it is common from a strike at you. And some people may think that's biting. Um. Let's see, what else can I tell you about these amazing animals? Um, they are kind of a burrowing snake and that's why they have the nose like they do. I don't know, it won't focus. I wish it would focus on it. It was a little better. Um, they have a, a very pronounced upward slope to their nose, which, uh, which is very, it's actually very cute. Uh, I don't know if you can see it. I wish it would focus on it. Yeah, it's not going to pick it up. Uh, oh well. I tried. Uh, yeah, their, their noses are very cool. That's why they're called the hog noses because their nose kind of looks like a, a hog would look. Um, and he does, if I'm moving, I'm noticing right now holding him at when I move my other hand around him pretty fast, uh, he does flatten. He flattens his neck out and he wants to look appear bigger than he really is. Um, and that's pretty cool. He's, he's, a, he's a pretty cool snake. He's pretty calm. Uh, when I was getting him out of his house, I figured he would try to run from me, but he did not. He just laid there and smelled my hand once or twice and was okay with it and ready to come. Um, so, yep, Western Hog knows we have this male. And we have a female that's smaller than him, so I think I want to say it's two years when they're full grown. Uh, the females are maybe not full grown, but um, of breeding age, so we still have two years to hold on her. We do plan on breeding them um, just because they're, they're a very unique uh, animal, and I, I would like to be part of that uh, breeding. So we are going to breed them in the future. It's a long, long way down the road, but. That is a plan. Uh, that is one of our plans to be able to breed them. Um, she, the female, is a normal pattern. She's a conda het albino. So I don't remember. I want to say he's het green face or something. Hope I'm not wrong or saying anything wrong about that. It could be. So don't don't roast me too bad. Uh, but these uh, these guys are hard to find, believe it or not. Um, before we 
convinced ourselves that that's the kind of animal we wanted to go with. They were extremely, um, there was an abundance of them. <laughs> they just fell off the top of their head, excuse me. Uh, there was an abundance of them in the area. Uh, and then when we decided to get, to go the route of a hog nose, it ended up there were no more of them around. And um, we couldn't find any for probably six to eight months. So we had to uh, order I actually ordered this guy. Uh, I drove to pick him up probably two hours to an hour and 45 minutes, two hours away to pick him up. And the female got shipped to us from uh, Georgia, I believe is where it came from. So they're not as easy to find as you would think. Um, but anyhow, this is Monroe. Been good talking with you guys. I'll see you guys next time.